Thank you so much, Jessica, for inviting me to talk about Croatia. Uh, we're a somewhat small organization, so uh, it means a lot that you think our work has an impact enough to invite us here today. <clears throat> so as a brief overview, uh, I don't know if I've talked about this already uh, to some detail, but I'm just going to talk a little bit more about what who grew, who grew Asia is as an organization. <clears throat> As previously touched on, we consider ourselves not so much an NGO, but more of a multi-stakeholder platform. Uh, what that means is that we try to bring together people from government, academia, NGOs, civil society, uh, and agribusiness, as well as farmer associations directly together to push for more sustainable agriculture in Southeast Asia. We're quite young. Um, we were established in 2015. Um, and from an initial team of four, we've grown to nine. So it's still considered a lean but very effective team. <clears throat> Our story goes back a little further though than 2015. I think a lot of you are probably too young to remember with this, but in 2008, uh, the world faced a somewhat significant food crisis. Uh, and a direct result of that, uh, the World Economic Forum uh, had an event in 2009 to discuss these issues facing us uh, and our future in terms of food security and nutrition. What resulted from that was the creation of what's known as the NVA, which is the New Vision for Agriculture, which is a set of guidelines to address how we can uh, meet the needs of the future in terms of food security and nutrition. What was born from the NVA uh, is now four separate partnerships around the world. You have Grow Africa and Africa, you have the NBA Latin America, you have NBA India, and you have Grow Asia to serve here in Southeast Asia. And so Grow Asia is, in essence, then uh, a child of the World Economic Forum and the ASEAN Secretariat. Our ultimate mission is very much aligned with the new vision for agriculture and that is to increase farmer yield, so their production, their profitability, as well as the environmental sustainability of their operations by 20% by the year 2020 and to reach 10 million farmers by that goal. It's a somewhat, um, I think I say that it's a somewhat um, ambitious goal uh, is quite fair to say, but we are striving for it and we want to make it happen. How we try to get that done is through these four main overarching areas. First and foremost is to strengthen country partnerships. Uh, Croatia has four primary principles. Uh, one, that our work is market-led, that it's country-driven, that it takes a multi-stakeholder approach, and that it's focused on the smallholders. The first point, uh, strengthening country partnerships, really feeds to that note, that guiding principle of making sure our work is country-led, that you don't have these nine people sitting in Singapore telling uh, the local communities what to do with the five countries that we serve, which I'll get into in a little bit more detail later on. <clears throat> It's to convene and broker partnerships. So that's, again, really our job is to facilitate conversation and collaboration and between uh, mul multiple stakeholders in those five countries which we, in which we operate. So that's Indonesia, uh, the Philippines, quite obviously, Vietnam, Cambodia, uh, and Myanmar. The reason why we've chosen those five countries for now is because as a, government, as a uh, donor agency funded organization, uh, so our donors are the Canadian and the Australian governments, we've been given the mandate to try to push and try to help uh, countries within Southeast Asia that are not seen as developed in terms of its agricultural space. So that means that Thailand and Malaysia are seen as further along with the process in terms of sustainability, so we don't focus on them. And Brunei and Singapore are not really agricultural states, so they're off our list. Yeah, so it's about strengthening public partner partnerships and about convening and brokering uh, partnerships. There's also our work in supporting best practice and innovation. 
and that's really geared towards what we do in terms of scaling uh, what our working groups across uh, the region are already doing. So it's really taking uh, best practice from one place, providing strategic input <coughs> in another, and scaling the outcomes of those. And ultimately also sharing best practice. We do that through multiple platforms. Uh, for example, we have uh, our Croatia events every year. That's our Croatia forum, which is somewhat more high level. So that's bringing in ministers and CEOs of, of corporations and heads of NGOs. We had our this year event in May in Phnom Penh. Uh, we have our Grow Asia Practitioners Workshop. So that's really more of the people who are on the ground. That's going to be happening tentatively in October of uh, this year. And we have our Grow Asia Secretariat Workshops. So that's bringing in the people who we have in those five different countries. Uh, to share best practice and to learn from each other so that our work is scalable and so that we don't replicate the same mistakes across the different areas. On top of that, we have our knowledge sharing platforms. So if you ever visit the Grow Asia website, which I'm hoping you've already done prior to this talk, is that you've seen the Grow Asia Exchange, which I think is a, is a pretty fantastic depository of work that's already been done uh, on uh, issues across sustainable agriculture, divided by uh, the commodity, uh, specific cross-cutting issues, as well as the countries uh, in which they're focused on. We also have our blog posts, we have the reason why I'm here talking to you today is the Learning Alliance, uh, as well as a newly launched digital program, uh, which hopefully you'll be hearing from us a bit more about in the future, so watch this space. In terms of overarching impact of what Croatia has been doing today, bearing in mind that we've only been around for about a year and a half, uh, we've established five separate country partnerships. Uh, our, country, uh, our country partnership manager for the Philippines, Reggie, sitting right in the front. So if you have questions specific about the Philippines, please talk to him. As well as Joyce, who is our country coordinator for the Philippines. And we have uh, her counterparts in those five different countries as well, again, making sure that our work is country-led. We have 37 different working groups currently in operation across 46 different value chain projects. Uh, we have 304 partners, roughly divided between half of them being agribusiness, 50% uh, of that half being uh, multinational, and the other 50% being uh, more locally-based agribusinesses. And the remaining 50% of the 304 are a combination of civil society organizations, NGOs, farm associations, as well as representatives from government. Uh, I mentioned earlier that our 10 million goal is somewhat, uh, up, well, not optimistic, but not the right words, enthusiastic. Um, we've currently hit slightly over 500,000 farmers impacted by our work. Uh, but again, the whole uh, point of scaling is that it's meant to be exponential. So we're still quite confident that we are going to hit that goal. And I think quite important to address is not just the, the number of impacted, but we've also had, uh, through our value chain uh, projects, around 31 million US dollars invested into the value chain projects. Do we have questions so far? We're following? Great. Okay, so in the Philippines specifically, we're working on four main uh, working groups across eight different uh, value chain projects. Uh, we have coffee, corn, coconut, and fisheries. Fisheries in this case being specific to mud crabs for now. Uh, we're sort of in conversations to establish a cassava working group, but as I mentioned earlier, we are market-led, and since we haven't really found an off-taker for the cassava working group, that's a whole. But again, that's just an introduction as to what Croatia does as an organization. What I'm here to talk about mostly is how we deal with knowledge management. I've talked about the Croatia Exchange. I've talked about our digital program and through our other communication platforms and events. Uh, but specifically, today's conversation is going to be focused around our learning alliance 
which is my job. So I am the Learning Partner Network Manager for Croatia, uh, which is a bit of a mouthful, but what it means is that my job is to make sure that, or to facilitate conversation between the world of agribusiness and the world of academia, research institutes, and knowledge creators in general. A bit of background, the reason why Grow Asia is now focusing on uh, knowledge management in a bit more detail than we had before is something that I'm sure uh, most of you are quite uh, aware of, and that's the current landscape when it comes to knowledge management. Uh, there's a lot of fragmentation in terms of the sources of research. Uh, I'm sure you know that sometimes you'll be doing a gap analysis convinced that your work is going to fill a void only to find out that something has been done already but no one's heard about it. So that's one of the issues that we're trying to resolve. There's a lack of access to knowledge and this is not necessarily focused on uh, it not being online. It's also about access in terms of readability, in terms of people's understanding of what it is that people are saying especially true when it comes to the Learning Alliance because it is focused on putting together agribusiness with research institutes. And if we all sit down and reflect a little bit, I think we'll be quite aware that a lot of work produced by research institutes are very jargon-based and tend to, because of the passion uh, and the interest of the researchers involved, it tends to go into a bit more detail into things that someone who has 30 minutes to read a document might not have time to read. And lastly is that there's insufficient um, connection between the world of agribusiness and the world of academia, uh, which is why a lot of research is not necessarily action-based, uh, but is for the sake of knowledge, which in and of itself is not bad. And in fact, I argue that it's good, but it also does not really address the point of trying to have an impact on the lives of the people that Croatia is trying to reach, uh, which is the smallholder. Yeah, so again, what Grow Asia is trying to do in order to address the challenges put forth by this landscape is bring together agribusiness and research partners so that the conversations are fruitful, so that research is action based, and so all the things that you're already doing and the outputs that you're producing are actually being adopted into the market and not going and disappearing into the ether or just being cited in a journal somewhere and then dying then after. How we're trying to do this is a th three-step approach. Firstly, it's really to try to talk to the agribusinesses to figure out what their knowledge needs actually are. Uh, be it on specific commodities, is it particular cross-cutting issues, and then feeding that to the research partners that are in our network. Again, this uh, feeds very heavily into that guiding principle of ours, that our work has to be uh, market-led. Right? Be, there needs to be a demand for what it is that we're doing. The next step is to then, once the research institutes uh, take on these research questions and address these issues and create the action research, is to feed that back to the agribusinesses, either for feedback, or to promote adoption of that work that's already being conducted. Once we do that, we take that research and we'll try to push that towards smallholders so that it has impact on the ground as well, and is not something that's being talked about in a vacuum. This all seems quite abstract, and I don't know if you can actually read what it says, since the font's a bit small. Um, but I'll get into an illustration in a bit. Right now, what we're doing is focusing on this little stage. Uh, so I'm quite new to Croatia. I've been with the organization for a whole two days, sorry, two months and eight days. I started at the beginning of June. And so it's really quite a cerebral process for now, which is why we've engaged Circa already, is that we want to fully understand what the research institutes have to offer and what the agribusinesses need so that we can act as a matchmaker, so to speak. So think of me as a, a knowledge-based pamasa. <laughs> yeah. What we plan for the future in terms of the rollout is to 
for now, we're focusing on the Philippines and on Myanmar. The reason for this being that the demand is there, our secretariats here are very well established and are able to push for this to happen. And we have a very strong pool of both agribusinesses and research institutes in the Philippines. Next year, we'll move on to, oh sorry, so the PPSA is the Philippines Partnership for Sustainable Agriculture and MAN is our Myanmar Agriculture Network. So those are our country partnerships. Uh, in 2018, we're going to be pushing that into Vietnam. So the Partnership for Sustainable Agriculture in Vietnam, to the CPSA, which is the Cambodian Partnership for Sustainable Agriculture, and to Peace Agro, which is the Partnership for Indonesia Sustainable Agriculture. Uh, and in 2019 is when we wanted to push for a regional learning alliance. Again, the reason why this was done is because I think Primarily because we have nine people and one person for the Learning Alliance being the, the man you're seeing in front of me today. So we want to make sure that each country has uh, dedicated the resources to make sure a National Learning Alliance is functioning fully and robustly before we try to do something big and grand with no actual impact ultimately. Yeah, so this is something I've addressed already. So far the conversations have been very abstract. <coughs> The question then is, what do these learning alliances actually look like in practice? Uh, I think the answer to that can be quite varied. They could be very, very simple. For example, if we talk to Unilever and they say that, oh, we're looking for uh, certain technologies to help promote uh, production of coconut, specifically for uh, co co coconut sugar then perhaps you could link that to SERPA, you have the BIC here, and perhaps they could have a solution that we could then feed directly to Unilever, and Unilever, having working groups already established with Croatia, can work directly with the small holders. That creates a conversation between the agribusinesses and the research institutes, which with a tangible impact on the ground for the small holders. But this is a, in an ideal world where things are simple, which, uh, I think we all know it's not necessarily the case. So even though they can be quite straightforward, they might not be at all. <clears throat> this is a separate example, say the same structure, right? Where, say, Unilever decided we want uh, to increase our yields uh, of coconut production so that we can create more uh, coconut sugar. They talk to Circa, Circa decides that, okay, we can help you because we have uh, the BIC, which is an incredible uh, uh, has incredible resources in terms of research and technologies available. However, uh, we might not necessarily have the, or the, say we know of someone in uh, uh, UP Los Baños that has insight into, uh, say, the actual plants, the, the crop. There are ways in which we can increase production via a fertilizer as well. So they talk to UP Los Baños, who then refer Serga to, hey, why don't you talk to uh, Ateneo de Manuela University? Because they do a lot of work on, say, assessing the viability of certain crops from a business perspective. So even though you have the technologies that say we can adapt the fertilizer use, is that economical for Unilever to then put into practice? So they talk to them and they then talk back to Unilever, who decides, okay, that's great, uh, let's implement it on the ground. Turns out, Unilever doesn't actually have direct influence or people on the ground. They can then go through organizations like Global Agri Ventures uh, to work with the smallholders, having impact on the smallholder, who then get measured because Ateneo University also happens to do a lot of uh, case study research, so talking about business models, to then measure the impact of that, create a document which we send to the Myanmar Agriculture Network who then sends that to ACIAR, which is the Australian Center for International Agriculture Research, who perhaps has ways in which to tweak the process and can improve it. They then send that to Fresh Studio, which is a different organization which works on branding and marketing, uh, so to help research agencies position their work in a way that's easy to digest and understand. It feeds that back to Man, and Man sends that to us, and we send back to Sierra and Unilever. So it's that multiple cycle. So that's a lot of information to take in and recognize this. But the point being that sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. 
but ultimately the focus is still there. It's ultimately about improving what you can do for the small owner, as well as what you, what meeting the needs of the every businesses, and trying to position these partners as uh, creators of action research with tangible impact on the ground, so that their work is not seen as a footnote in a journal, but having impact for people's lives, which is what we are trying to do as a collective body. So what this means then is via a learning alliances like that, we're able to address these three issues, right? We are reducing the fragmentation because you have people working uh, directly together in a concerted way. Uh, you try to reduce the lack of access to knowledge because you make it available and because, you, because of the conversations with the every businesses, you're able to talk about it in a way that they understand in a way that they can see the value of your research, which is a very important and extremely underrated when it comes to producing actionable research. And of course, it deals with the point of insufficient focus on market-level research because that's your starting point. Your starting point is addressing what do organizations actually need on the ground. Which I talked about already. So if you don't Mind. I know traditionally the session works in a way that I talk for 45 minutes or 30 minutes preceded by uh, a flurry of questions from the floor, hopefully. Uh, but it would be great if perhaps I could get feedback from you guys already as to think about the work that you're already doing, presuming that most of you are involved in research, right? What has been your biggest challenge around uh, creating and or getting your action research adopted. Perhaps volunteers. Yes? I would just like to <clears throat> share. Um, I'm from the SAR uh, project, uh, mm -hmm. and I think one of the biggest challenges that we are facing conducting action research is the political dynamics in the, in the municipal level and barangay level. So I think it affects the action research since the agricultural land that the smallholders, the farmers are using is under the uh, the ruling of the political, uh, the politics and the government. So, thank you for sharing that. So basic workers from Siyaka. I think one of the challenges uh, that we face in our work in general in linking farmers to the market is the organization between what is the model. Mm -hmm. We have uh, working models of organizing farmers. And uh, because as we know, if we are going to link them to value chains, they have to be organized. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the challenges that we face. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, can you please go back to the framework again? Um, I'm Nina Villena and I work with the IC. Um, my, I, I work closely with the scientists and the farmers, so my question is um, first for the relationship between the multinational companies and, uh, and the researchers. So how does the issue of IPR or intellectual mm -hmm. property rights for technology come in? And then what is the relationship between the multinational companies and the smallholder farmers? Is it more of like contract growing mm -hmm. after you've identified the product? So those are my questions. Okay, thank you. Well, this is actually more of an illustrative model. It's not something that's actually already happening. So it's just to kind of showcase what a relationship could potentially look like. So don't take this as fact. Um, I think in terms of IP laws, of course, it's something that we will need uh, to address. But at least some organizations work differently from others. Uh, research institutes, for example, uh, like ISEA here in the Philippines, a lot of their research is conducted to be treated as inputs into further research. And so those are the kind of models that we've been working with rather than restricted ones. Grovasia's model of working in general is what we would say is pre-competitive. Uh, so it's really about collaboration before all those IP laws are addressed. And with the Learning Alliances specifically, 
Uh, what we would do then is to have a set agenda and KPIs, and in those agendas, we have a very clear layout about where attribution lies, uh, who is responsible for doing what, where does funding come from, is it from the uh, universities who already have grants, is it from the uh, corporates who are willing to pay to get their answers, uh, the answers to their questions, or perhaps it's a collaboration that can be put forward to a development agency who will then say, okay, that's great, you guys are partnering, we'll give you money to push that forward. So I hope, does that answer your question? Okay. So just to, because we're running out of time, unfortunately, is to go back to this point. Uh, so what I've, I've had several discussions already with different research institutes, especially in the Philippines, about the different challenges that people are facing when it comes to uh, the creation and more importantly the adoption of action research. Is that, first and foremost, it tends to be about access to networks, and that's quite linked to your comment as well about uh, the models, like how do we actually implement this, right? Is that who do we talk to, who do we bring in, how does this partnership work? Uh, and this is where Grow Asia and our networks come in, is that we already have 304 partners in the Grow Asia network, and we've had experience working with them through our working groups. So there's some things that can be adapted, some things that we'll have to invent from scratch, but we'll try to use this. The second thing that I've heard quite frequently is the idea of communication. Uh, I've touched on this already, but research institutes, uh, researchers uh, tend to not focus on the same things as someone from an agribusiness industry would focus on. Uh, for example, if I, as a researcher, uh, was focusing on, say, uh, mud crab reproduction, right? And I say that, oh, a lot of farmers, I find out that a lot of farmers' uh, crab uh, population bases are dying because they molt at different periods uh, uh, in time. And so therefore when they're molting, other crabs eat them and so therefore they all die. But I also find out that, oh, there's a way to control when they molt so they all molt at the same time uh, based on, say, controlling temperatures. I could stop there as a researcher. What we want to do then is to link a researcher to an agribusiness who will then say, oh, so you can control when they malt, which means they don't lose out on their yields, which means we can sell more crabs, which means profitability for the smallholder. So it's trying to get that extra step is one. Secondly is when it comes to talking about the value of your research. Uh, researchers in general, well, that's not really, that's a fallacy. Uh, many researchers are not necessarily the best at communicating what they're doing succinctly. Right? An abstract does not uh, cut it when it comes to talking to an agribusiness uh, person. They want numbers and, an, and a graph on a PowerPoint, and that's it. No words. <clears throat> so part of what we're going to try to do with the Learning Alliance is uh, brand value proposition training. And that's working with organizations like the one I mentioned earlier, uh, Fresh, uh, Fresh Studio is talking about how we can market our research in a way that's appealing to agribusinesses, in a way that's easy to understand for a layman, and in a way that is engaging and interesting and succinct. Uh, so that's one of the things that we're doing. And thirdly, and I think this is actually quite important, is to work with researchers <coughs> and agribusinesses to showcase the importance of mindset. I find that people sometimes, but it's very easy to fall into the trap of relying on grants. That, oh, it's okay, I'm doing this research because I know I will continue to get money for doing this research. I don't need to talk to an agribusiness to continue doing what I love doing. Um, the reality is that that's going to take a lot of work, but we want to try to shift that mindset more into thinking about uh, investments rather than grants. So rather than relying on an external body to fund your research, to take something you're already doing that has impact for the small owners, that has tangible commercial impact for agribusinesses, and perhaps get funding that way as an investment rather than as a grant. Is that right there? I know there's a bit round around you, right? And so ultimately what that all feeds into, and I'm just wrapping up now, is what we want to try to do with the Learning Alliance, of course, create action research, 
but ultimately it's to change the way that we work with agribusinesses away from sometimes this happens, right? You show your bit of research in agribusiness and they're like, no thank you, I don't understand. Thanks. Uh, to something more of accommodation, which is, oh thank you for sharing with me. I'm not gonna action on it, but thank you for sharing it with me, into collaboration. And that's really focused on two uh, traditionally seen as opposite sides of the spectrum coming together in order to improve each other's work exponentially. Uh, the word that corporates like to use is synergy uh, for the same thing. And that's what we want from the Learning Alliance, is for agribusinesses to come together with research institutes and help each other get uh, improve their overall output in a way that also helps the smallholders in the long term sustainability of every uh, actor involved in this dynamic. Okay? And so I'm going to conclude there, and now I'm happy to take any and all questions, even if they weren't directly <laughs> asked by me. Do we have any other questions?